Hello, hello. Oh. My God. Brittany. Hello. <laughs> so, I have some patches in front of me. And it's happening. I'm making stuff with the sub patches. So I'm going to do my best to talk, but I feel like recently I've been doing a nice mixture of talking while like actually working on something. And I have a lot of patches. Like I finally have a little bit of a gap in like my posting schedule where I can actually start working on these patches. I got hot Cheetos because um, I'm starving and I haven't really had lunch. So we're going to snack on hot Cheetos. And I don't know what I was going to say. But I need to lay all these patches out now. I have, shoot, I have one panel, but I like to do everything. Like, I like to join two panels at a time. So kind of bear with me. This might be like more of a, a silent, um, a silent crochet with me, if you will. I'm trying to sit here and figure out. Oh yeah, there we go. Some patches. That looks cute. Let's do this one in the center. Boom. Oh, let's change it up. That's cute. That's cute. Hmm. Probably put a green one right there. I'm missing something. What am I missing? Ah. I promise y'all, I'm gonna start slip stitching these, these bad boys together. Green. Missing the green. There we go. All right, I have all my patches laid out in front of me. And now I have my darning needle. Now I'm trying to debate if I should use a crochet hook. This is so boring. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, but I'm about to start working on these patches here. I'm just trying to debate how to do this. You know what? I'm going to use a crochet hook. Okay. She's back. She's back. Don't look at my feet. That's gross. You guys are disgusting. All right. What's this? It's a six. Yeah, let's use a six. All right. Here we go. Brittany, you're getting your hooks tomorrow? 
That's exciting. Send me a photo when you get them. I would love to see your reaction. I have, I've had a couple people on Instagram, um, like tag me that they like received their packages. So that's really cool. I want to see like three people so far. So that's really fun. I'm excited. People are starting to get their packages. Everything has been shipped out. So if you guys saw my last live stream, I am currently in the process of making more. Okay, I'm gonna get too distracted, but I don't wanna bring, I don't wanna like stop doing this, but what was I gonna say? I got stuff in the mail for the next hook design, hook designs, and I just ordered more stuff. So I have like a lot of new designs coming out, like a lot. I want to say there's going to be like 10 different designs. And I cannot wait to start like whipping them up. I actually could have started a new design today, but I kind of decided to uh, hold off because I've been editing non-stop since eight o'clock this morning. This is literally my first break of the day, if you would call it a break, but I'm like going right back into more work. <sighs> Just been literally working all day. I had to like refilm something today, like for a tutorial. And I also had to get it like submitted to the sponsor in time. So I got up really early, like not really early, but I got up at like seven, started recording and then I edited stuff, sent it off. I went to Home Depot to get a new pot for one of my plants because she needed to be repotted. And then I went back out and edited more and I haven't even eaten yet today. So that's how my day is going, but I'm having fun. And I'm currently just slip stitching these patches together. And did y'all see? Did y'all see? Did you guys see? Do you know what I'm talking about? We hit 50K, y'all. We hit 50K here on YouTube. So that was exciting. So fun. Last stitch. Oh, and then I also, I'm like so all over the place. I'm like trying to think and crochet at the same time. I'm not the best at multitasking, but um, I went on to Instagram and I was like, y'all, what do y'all want to see for a 50K video? And I got so many people that were like, cut your hair. You said you're going to cut your hair, cut your hair. So, I mean, the people have spoken. So all I'm gonna say is y'all should get your last minute fill of long-haired Aaron in before es no mas, okay? Do you guys have any suggestions for haircut that I should get? I have something in mind, but I would love to hear your opinions so you can either like tell me here in like the chat or you can like DM me a picture on Instagram and give me some haircut ideas. But yeah, the locks of loves is going to go pretty soon here. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I'm actually 
starting to feel a lot happier all of a sudden, like that I'm actually finally making all the giveaway stuff with these patches because they've been sitting in my living room for months and obviously I've been meaning to get around to this a lot sooner. Just got so caught up with life and personal shit. And then the end of January and February was like all focused on my business and making the merch. Ugh, guys, you're gonna have to stay tuned for like another studio vlog or maybe like the next live stream because the, the design shit that I got for the new hooks is so freaking cute. I don't want to like give anything away. But all I'm going to say is that I will be using those polymer clay slices. Let me bring you guys in closer. They don't seem so far away. But yeah. I got so many, so many clay slices. All I'm going to say is this is going to be real different from the holographic glitter hooks that I just put out. So and I'm also thinking about, all right, I have two patches or like four joined like so. Um, but I'm thinking, I'm curious what you guys think about like if you guys want custom resin hooks, I'm thinking of a way, like I know how to do it, I think, but I'm thinking I might open up like, um, like on my website, there could be like a form that you guys fill out while wow, my hair looks crazy. But I'm thinking for like the custom, obviously I don't wanna just like agree to any custom, crochet hook because I might not have the product for it like depending on how crazy like the design is but I'm thinking about just making like a form that you guys could fill out on my website um pretty much stating what custom hooks you want and depending on the design I can start doing my custom hook orders. So yeah, I feel like that'd be easier because I don't wanna just like open up a thing where you can just like immediately like reserve a spot for custom hooks because although a lot of them are very ideally doable, when I had you guys like fill out that Google survey form like over a month ago, some of the recommendations were crazy like they were cool but it's like I don't know how to do that and like I don't want to get into that yet so yeah if you guys are interested in like filling out a custom hook form I feel like I could add that to the website I honestly don't know how many things I can make with all of these patches on a different note like I have so many I don't even know, I feel like I'm gonna have so many things at the end of this, like, let me try to think. <laughs> Let's see, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's like 10, 10, 20. I feel like I'm gonna have like 10 bags at least at the end of this, which is crazy. I don't even know how long that's gonna, take me because although I'm still like slip stitching all these patches together I still have to like sew or I still have to like crochet like the handles or like the straps for the bag so it's like there's so many steps jazz 90 Nicole said I want to buy hooks I want to buy a hook set for my birthday. Will you have any crochet hooks available in the month of April? Yes, I will. I'm, if everything goes to plan, I'm hoping to have another hook drop um, right at the end of March. So I'm not really sure on the date yet. 
um, but I'm thinking either the third week of March or the fourth week of March. I'm going to be restocking the floral hook sets and I'm also going to be adding new designs. So that's going to be at the end of March. So just in time for April. Um, and in case you guys don't know, um, like you guys haven't seen that on my website, there is a email waitlist that you guys can sign up for. So that's pretty much just going to, if you guys sign up, like just all you have to do is give me your email. And in case y'all are worried, I'm not into spam emails. I'm not like these big companies that are going to be sending out annoying ass emails, you know, every two or three days. I will literally only send out emails when stuff is going to be restocked on the website. So in case you don't want to miss it, or like you're not on Instagram a lot and like you don't see my my posts or like my alerts and stuff, um, just sign up on the waitlist on my website and you'll receive one email a couple of days before everything is restocked on the website. So that's a really good way. Um, Cause I know there was a couple of people that said like, you know, I follow you here on YouTube, um, but like, I don't really use Facebook or Instagram. And like, I totally forgot that you were doing the hook drop or like I, like I didn't see the reminder on Instagram. So in case you guys don't really use those platforms, just sign up on the wait list. Again, I promise I'm not going to be like blowing y'all up. I'm not going to be sending out a bunch of annoying emails. I don't, y'all know, it's just me running my business. So I ain't got time for all that. Okay. I don't have time to be like making email templates and sending them out all the time. I can barely keep up with like my Instagram. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good way to get a reminder so that you don't miss anything. But thank you for asking and inquiring about the hooks. I have been having so much fun. Oh, something I wanted to tell you guys. I talked about it on my last live stream, but in case you guys are new here or you didn't get to tune in last time, um, long story short, I'm going to be, what's it called? I'm going to have like a pop-up tent, like a pop-up shop. I'm going to have a pop-up shop sometime in April. Um, I live in Southern California. So if any of you guys are kind of local or like in driving distance, totally feel free to come out and see me in person. You don't have to purchase anything. I think it'd just be fun if you guys just want to come out and like hang out and, you know, make friends and stuff. Um, but yeah, a friend of a friend, pretty much my friend at this point, he is hosting his own like pop-up event where like a bunch of different um, creators and like crafters are going to be having their own booths and tents selling, marketing, whatever, their business and their products and stuff. And he asked me to set up a little booth. So I don't have the exact date on that yet. I know it's still like in the planning stages, but that will be, I want to say like mid-April. So I guess what led me to this thought <laughs> It's starting to get dark in here. I'm going to put my lights on in a second, but what led me to this thought is now that I have um, made hooks, I made a promise to myself that once I made my first hook drop, I'm going to start getting into some of the other merch that I have been dying to make. And I don't want to get too crazy because I know I will very easily get carried away, but I want to make. Um, sweaters. It's getting really dark. I want to make sweaters and I want to make tote bags, um, like canvas tote bags. And if I am adventurous and I have enough time, I would also like to make like coffee tumblers or like just, you know, my hair, I look fucking crazy. But yeah, I just want to make like coffee cu cups, iced water cups, whatever you want to call it. But that's what I plan on having at the pop-up. Of course, I'm going to be bringing the hook sets and stuff. But yeah, I want to have other things available at my booth. So if you guys would like to come out and see me. Yeah, it'll be a fun time. 
I promise the moment I figure out, you know, I'll probably bug him today to see if there's like any progress on it yet. Well, I'll get Jordan to bug him for me, but all right, it's getting too dark. Let's go ahead and put some lights on, but I have, okay, let's speed it right along. I have this many attached. I need to throw on some lights because y'all cannot see me for crap. La 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 la, I promise I'm still here. Don't go away. Woo! How is that? Oh, hold on. Okay. I'm back. Oh, that's so much better. I look oily. I swear it's it's my SPF. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I like missed all these chat stuff. Alyssa. It is currently 5.30 where I live. I'm in California, good old CA. Can't wait to get out, but <laughs> it's 5.30 at night where I'm at. What time is it where you're at, Alyssa? And Brittany, thank you. Thank you for saying congrats. Yay, caffeine, what's up? You're here. Oh, Jazz, thank you. Thank you, Jazz Nicole. Oregon, hi, Hannah. Hello from California. You're like my neighbor, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Ninja213 said, hello, Aaron. Do you or Jordan have recommendations for lighting to take merch photos? Something that will work well, but be affordable for someone on a budget. Thank you. So I can kind of give you a couple different recommendations, um, things that we kind of use. Um, keep in mind, Jordan has a lot of equipment. So, you know, he's a photographer, but um, my friend who's setting up a pop-up pop event, he also has his own merch and stuff. And believe it or not, for taking like merch photos with really good lighting, he actually bought one of those pop-up, they're very small. They're probably like two foot by two foot, but they're like a pop-up light box off of Amazon. And it's just like this huge, big black box. It's like a cube. And on the inside, there's just like white everything. So you can put stuff in there and just use whatever kind of lighting that you have. I'm sure they have recommendations on Amazon and it just lights up the entire box. So it kind of looks like you're in a studio setting and it takes really nice photos. He took all of his merch photos there. He also had Jordan take some, but for like on a budget, those cube things are probably like $20, $30. Um, and the lighting itself is probably like another $15, $20. So that's a really good recommendation. Personally, for me at home, Jordan and I use a few different things. I wouldn't really say they're so much on a budget, but you guys know I rely a lot on my ring light. So if you're interested on in getting my ring light, um, I have it linked. If you guys go to like my description in any of my videos, I have an Amazon shop and I have like all the equipment that I use linked in there. So you can just click my link and it's in my filming gear equipment link. And yeah, my ring light is in there. Um, we also recently, I've been loving this. It provides really good light and it's super bright, but it was about a hundred bucks or like 120 bucks, but it's this huge light panel, but it's really durable. It puts out way more light than my ring light. Um, I'll have to go like find it for you after this video because I don't want to be like on the computer while I'm talking to you guys, but for the price, it's really, really good. There's a hundred different settings, a hundred different lighting options, colors, everything. Um, but yeah, just to start off, honestly, I would say a ring light. Like the ring light that I had, I got by on that thing for so long. And Jordan have, and I have used um, the ring light that's like in my Amazon shop. We've used that probably on almost every single shoot. It's not the only light, um, but it's really, really good. So I'd recommend that one for you.
Hannah said, speaking of March, have you done stitch markers? So I haven't because I'm kind of torn on what to do. When it comes to stitch markers, I have two things that come to mind. I kind of at first wanted to do like something with resin because I'm already using resin, like resin stitch markers. But then of course I'll have to use like the jump rings and like order the lobster claws and like all that stuff on my own. But I'm not really sure of like the design I want the resin stitch marker to be. So I spent a lot of time a couple of weeks back looking at different, well, my Chi Chi's are out. I spent a lot of time looking at like different resin molds that I could use as like my stitch marker design, whatever. Um, so far, I haven't really found anything that I'm like, oh, I want that, you know? Everything's kind of like, oh, it's okay. I, I could do that. On the other hand, um, I found a couple different suppliers on, I think it was like Alibaba, who do enamel stitch markers. So higher quality, a lot more durable. Um, the only thing is I'd have to wait for them to send me samples of the things that I want. And then also I need like a draft of like the image I want. Obviously I wanna do like the E logo, but I don't want all of the stitch markers to be the E logo. I wanna have other things like maybe a little Corgi stitch marker from Mowgli and like a little plant stitch marker from Millie a yarn ball. So I need to like have those images like drafted up so that I can send it to the manufacturer. But yeah, long story short, I haven't made any progress on the stitch markers, but I really want to. So if you have any feedback for me, like which route you think I should go, I could just bite the bullet and ugh, imagine how cool it would be to have stitch markers and hooks on my website. This is like a dream, actually. Hi, Samantha. I'm just trying to read all your messages, I'm sorry. Okay, Brittany said, Michaels is currently having a buy one, get one 50% off until the 12th. I'll be honest, I don't know. Oh no, there probably is. I don't know if there's any yarn that I currently want to get at Michael's. Like, there's a lot of yarn that I always want. But I'm trying to think if there's anything new that I want to spend my money on. I don't know. Y'all, did you guys see my Instagram story post probably like a week ago where I got that new loops and thread eco yarn, watercolor yarn at Michael's? Yes, I have a project in mind for that one. Trust me, I do. I just, I could just like make videos all day long, every single day. But keep in mind, like I really want to put a dent in these patches. So this is like top of the list. This takes priority before I start doing more things. But yeah, if there's like new yarns, please let me know. Also, very random, but I'm on the hunt for a really good and affordable eyelash yarn. So if you guys have recommendations for eyelash yarn, I haven't really done like much digging around, but I have like a like shawl, shawl or like poncho, not poncho, but like a, I don't know, some kind of like cover up. And I wanna use eyelash yarn, but I don't know who makes a good one. And I don't, I, I haven't even searched that tells you where my head's at. I just think of these things and I'm like, oh, y'all tell me. Wow. Samantha, you're in Georgia. Hannah, you're in Oregon. What? 536 in Oregon. How does that work? Are you like close to the border? I swear I passed fourth grade geography. I just cannot remember. Oh no, duh. I thought it was I thought it was 3 p.m. right now for a second. Duh, you have the same time zone as me. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Texas, Alyssa, you're in Texas. Martina, you're in New Zealand, Illinois, Trinidad, Argentina. You guys literally blow my mind every time I come on a live and you guys tell me where you're tuning in from like I can't it's so hard for me to like wrap my head around the fact that like you know it's not just people like in California watching my videos like 
Trinidad, New Zealand, Argentina, like, I don't know, it's like very humbling, like, I feel so small now, like, I'm about to get, like, all teary-eyed for no reason, but I feel, like, so small, like, the world is so big, and there's so many people, and I honestly wish we could all freaking just, like, hang out, like, in person, like, we could all just, like, crochet together and drink coffee and, like, watch some kind of Netflix show. Speaking of Netflix, what are you guys watching right now, or Amazon or Hulu? What is your show currently? I'm like, <laughs> I'm not even crocheting anymore. I'm gonna crochet right now. But I just like have these thoughts right now. Um, <laughs> recently on Netflix, as I've been editing or crocheting and making stuff, I've actually been binge watching Good Girls. I started watching that show when was that? 2019 when it first came out. And I just saw a couple days ago that there is a new season. So I've been binging that. I'm almost done with the fourth season, but it's really entertaining. It's really good. Um, I honestly thought it was going to be like too cheesy, but it's not. I like it. And then believe it or not, you know, Jordan and I were into anime and Avatar. And recently we've been watching the anime or animation um, Parasite. And at first I was like, oh, this is going to be a super annoying like superhero bloody gory anime too action-packed but actually parasite hooked me and we've been watching it every night before bed every night so i'm curious what are like your shows right now you guys ninja said thank you so much for the recommendation i'll check your link for the ring light too i would love to find out about the panel light when you have a chance to link it thank you you're so awesome um Ninja, just so that I don't forget, do you have Instagram? Is there a way that you can DM me that way after I shut my computer down after the chat and everything? I have the notification on my phone to go add the panel light to the Amazon things that you can see or even just send you the link for it um, because I don't want to forget. And I'm a big advocate for the ring, like that panel light. I'm not using it right now, but I think you guys have noticed that like in every video, I have like a new color, like in the background. And it's because I've been using that light. It really helps to fill up the room. So yeah, um, either email me like right now or send me a DM on Instagram right now so that I get the alert and I don't forget. Holy moly, there's like 65 people in here right now. This is what happens. Like I get so many people in the live chat in the stream and then I just, I want to talk to you guys and then the chat just goes and I can't keep up with it. All right, I'm gonna start crocheting. Probably should not have gotten the large because this thing's like all watered down. I feel like I wasted this coffee. That's like the worst feelings. All right, let's finish up this first row. You guys hear that? That was annoying. There we go. Alyssa, you have a quirky too, and his name is Scooter. That's so cute. I'm curious. Is your corgi more of like the laid back, chill kind of corgi? Or is he like the loud, demanding, sassy? Yeah, what kind of corgi is he? I'm curious on his personality. Because I've seen kind of a mixture from like the different corgi accounts that I follow on Instagram. Some, even though their dogs are young, some of their dogs are very lovable and cuddly and just sweetheart, calm, patient. And that is not lovely. I mean, he's very lovable and cuddly at certain times of the day. Um, like if it's first thing in the morning, he'll cuddle 
And if it's right before bedtime, he'll cut off. But if it's like throughout the day, he's so demanding. I was literally, I was editing a video today and I didn't realize it as I was filming because I was crocheting. But in the video, I have like a time lapse going and you can see this dog <laughs> while I'm crocheting, like come up to me with a ball in his mouth and he like drops it and he like looks at me and then I don't pay attention to him. So he picks it up again and brings it closer to me and like drops it and he's like, yo, play with me right now. I don't care what you're doing. It's my time. He's very much that kind of corgi. Thanks. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Wow, 64 people are here right now. That's very impressive. I can't remember if we've gone over 100 yet, 100 people. I think there was one time we might have like hit it or like hit 101 or something like that. And then like really quickly, like 10 people logged off. I can't quite remember, but to me, that's a pretty impressive audience. I don't know what I'm trying to say. McKinley asked if I'm going to be coming out with new clothing tutorials for the summer. Come on, always. I know you guys have seen I'm like on the home decor kit, but there are plenty, plenty of things, plenty of things that I want to make. Um, I'm curious where your head's at. What kind of summer type of tutorial, clothing tutorial are you interested in or thinking about? Okay. Um, it was actually really fun, but yesterday I recorded, I've been meaning to do it for so long, but I actually recorded a, it was pretty much just like a video of me sharing with all of you guys some of my favorite written patterns for crochet and knitting. And these were like things, these are things that have been like in my car or like screenshotted on my phone for so many months now. So there's a lot of things in that video that I mentioned that I plan on like recreating, whether it's making like my own version of it or just purchasing the pattern and making it. There are a lot, a lot of things. This is super random. Well, you guys probably saw that I got to pattern test for Eliza, Elizations, over on Instagram. And I made her Huda vest. And I didn't get to pattern test for this other person, but it's funny, like at this very same time, I think they launched their patterns like on the same day. But um, there's this, this creator, crocheter, fiber artist that I follow on Instagram. And her name is Ocean Knits. O-S-H-E-N Knits. And she just released her, I think it's called Made You Fall or Made You, shit, I don't remember. It's like Made You Fall Knit Blouse. And it is so adorable. I, I might purchase the pattern for that very, very soon. But there are like a lot of other things that patterns that I want to make in like that video. There's probably like 15 things that I showcased in the video. Um, so I thought it'd just be really cool to like highlight other creators and things that I've had my eye on for like a long time that I'm sure you guys are going to see and be like, oh my God, I want that too. Um, I'm not going to start it anytime yet. But one of the things that is on my list for spring slash summertime is I wanna make some crochet shorts. And I know you guys have seen me make those um, like form fitting booty short, crocheted booty shorts. I don't want it to be like that. I don't want them to be like booty shorts. I definitely want it to be more of like a relaxed, loose, kind of like beach, like cover up beach shorts. Um, and I've had this idea scribbled down for so long in my phone. 
What did I just do? Um, oh, I'm like getting all confused and twisted up here. That's not right, is it? Oh yeah, it is, okay. Wait. Mm -hmm. What have I done? Oh, well, screw it. <laughs> We're just gonna keep going. I don't know what's happening. I have too many patches in front of me. I forgot what I was saying, but yeah, I really wanna do some beach shorts. Or just kind of like lounge. That's the right word, like lounge. Loose, flowy, drapey, not form-fitting shorts like my last one. So that'd be a really nice like summertime, springtime creation. Yeah, let me read some of these comments because I'm sure y'all are blowing me up and I have no idea what you guys are saying. Anna said, said, I, I get it, girl. There's not enough time in the day to do all the crafts that we want to do. It's not fair. It's really not. <laughs> it's really not. Uh, just trying to make do with what I can. I think it's very surprising. I feel like today is actually the first day that I haven't touched my resin. But I might go play with some more resin hooks tonight because oh no I still have to edit something else hmm because I really want to start dabbling like into the new designs that I got I really want to I was gonna say something and I don't remember I don't remember guys Ooh, don't do that okay Samantha said, the eco yarn at Michael's is cool, but it's so expensive. I spent like $70 for just yarn for my chunky sweater. I wish it didn't cost so much. Yeah, I mean, for, it's it's hard because like there's certain brands that are priced so, so cheap. Like the impeccable yarn. You could probably make a whole sweater with like, I don't know, like eight balls or six balls, not even like six balls of that yarn. You can probably make like a whole sweater and each of them costs like less than $3. And then on the other hand, those eco, eco yarns, they are a lot pricier, like in comparison than like the really cheap yarns like the impeccable, but it definitely is just a different quality of yarn altogether. Like the eco yarns, like the new ones that are out, they're not acrylic. They're those are like recycled polyester, but like there's like recycled something else. I don't know, but uh, it's just really hard to kind of gauge prices and stuff like that because acrylic can be so cheap. But if you want to use a different quality of yarn, like wool or something, you know, you're definitely not to pay more for that. I feel like the price of the eco yarns are very comparable to the price of um like wool ease like lion brand wool ease each of those skeins is six or seven dollars and you get like the same yardage it's not that's okay yeah it's like the same amount of yardage i'm very confused with what's happening right now So it's kind of just, yeah, it's like not fair. Shit can be so expensive, but I feel like even though polyester is like not my favorite go-to kind of yarn, I'm definitely willing to spend my money on a recycled yarn. Cause it's kind of like you gotta, we, where we can, you know, try to do our best to be sustainable with our yarn and I already know like there's so many people that really dislike 
what is it called? Like synthetic fibers because they're not sustainable. They're not eco-friendly, even though they are affordable. So it's like where I can spend, like where I can get eco-friendly or sustainable type of yarn, I'm willing to spend the money on that instead of just buying more acrylic yarn. Don't get me yarn, yarn, don't get me wrong. Acrylic is probably always going to be just like my standard everyday favorite kind of yarn. But I don't know. It's really cool that that eco yarn is at least the watercolor one that I got. That thing is 100% made with 100% recycled materials. So I really like that fact, but I'm trying to think. I think there are other Eco Lux yarn, which is like a really nice. I like the quality of that yarn. I think it's like 60, 65% recycled materials. And then the rest is the wool and something else. I'm not too sure. I don't remember. But keep in mind, at Michael's, they always have a coupon. I'm sure some of you guys like already use the coupons that they have. But if you have the Michael's app, I don't put in my email or anything. like I don't give them any information. But just by having the app on my phone, they always have a 20% off coupon on the app. So, you know, normally if you're the, the skein or the ball of yarn is like $7, $8, you can get that for 20% off. And I want to say like seven times out of 10, Michael's always has a sale. I can only remember a few times I went there and there was no discount on the yarn. So I was able to use my 20% off coupon code. But other than that, they always have a sale on their yarn. So never, that's like my one tip to y'all today, never shop at Michael's without printing out or bringing your phone for a coupon, never. Because they always have something. Same thing with Joann's, guys. Same thing. Joann's, if you have the app, Joann's actually has better discounts than Michael's does. They just have a different selection of things. But Joann's on the app, they always have an in-store coupon code. Always. So be smart. Save your money, y'all. I... Damn near had a heart attack. I had to file my, I had to file my self-employed taxes this last week. And I like, part of me was like kind of expecting what she was gonna say, but like 80% of me was like, no, like it's not gonna be that high. <laughs> so bad so bad obviously I'm not surprised like I'm not like blindsided completely because I'm aware that being self-employed nothing is taxed so when you do your taxes you have to pay taxes on everything that you originally didn't so I think it was just kind of shocking to see like such a such a drastic price at the end of everything I was like oh boy it's not a happy camper but it's okay it's okay it's a new day I'll get over it yeah I'm curious um how many of you guys on here are self-employed like legally not like not um not so much like side hustle, but like your primary job or primary income is self-employment. I'm very curious without giving me any numbers. Y'all don't have to give me numbers, but how, how did your tax season go this, well, this year? Are you okay? Are you guys, did you guys have to be resuscitated? Did you guys cry? Or were you guys smart and you guys did your quarterly taxes? because now I have to do quarterly taxes. But it was nice, I got to learn a lot on my tax appointment about 
running your own business and being self-employed. So I feel like eventually that'd be really cool to make a video about like that side of running your own business. I feel like for a majority of my subscribers, they won't give a flying fu about that video because like they don't want to hear about taxes and the boring stuff about a business. But a lot of it was like things, like there were some things I didn't know. So like it was nice to hear that. And I know a lot of you guys are trying to start your own business or you currently run your own business or whatever it is. And yeah. It was eye-opening. Dom, you said Hobby Lobby for the eyelash yarn. I know. Trust me, I know. The last, it's been so long since I was in a Hobby Lobby last because, you know, I'm not going to get into it. But the last time I was there, I do remember they have a lot. They have a lot of different yarn. Sorry, I'm just reading. I'm trying to read without my glasses because if I put my glasses on, I won't be able to see. It sounds very backwards, but if you guys know, you know. Philippines, Washington, D.C. Ooh, Marina, you said sheep just, sheepies. Sheepies Panda for eyelash yarn. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Is it pronounced Sheepies? Or is it pronounced like Sheepies? Sheepies? Or Shipjiz? I just call it Sheepies. Alberta, Canada. This is a good question. Samantha said, hi, I have a question. My cousin is having a baby and we're unsure of what to crochet the baby since we still don't know the gender. By the way, love your videos. There's a couple different things that you can make. Um, that was actually one of the things that I was making a lot before I started my YouTube channel. I was doing a lot of baby blankets. Um, and I didn't make baby blankets for people that I wasn't sure of what the gender was. Um, oh my gosh. That is inappropriate, but I colors. I made this one baby blanket. I don't have a photo of it, I don't think, but one of them was like a, it was like a zigzag or a wavy stripe, but I used like deep purple. I used a magenta. I used, I think like a light blue. So, I mean, there's like a lot of colors, honestly, not too, I know a lot of people say like pink is typically for little girl babies and the blues for like the little boys, but I honestly like mix, mix, match, miss, mix, match, mismatched, mix and matched, <laughs> mix, mix, I can't even talk. I didn't care about color. I kind of just made a bunch of different colors into one baby blanket. So that's one option. I know there's a couple people that like to make those. Um, honestly, the parents for your baby would really like like burp cloths. So if you can make pretty thin crocheted or thin knit burp cloths, I know parents go through those like nobody's business. So if you could use like a cotton yarn or something that's going to be washed a lot. Um, I feel like making them like a stack, like five or six burp cloths, that'd be really, really great. So maybe use like a number two sport weight or a number three DK weight yarn and just make them pretty thin because they don't need to be super thick. Um, but burp cloths. And then you could also make those things where it's like, there's like a binky, you know, the baby sucks on a binky. And then there's like a little square, kind of like blanket. It's just like a little grab thing for them. But that'd be really cute if you could crochet, like hand crochet or hand knit, like a little binky blanket. I don't know if this is making any sense, but I see the image in my head. So I hope that helps. The Bahamas, Canada, Georgia, New York College. Hi, Alexi. Oh, Lexi, my bad. <laughs> Ninja said, good girls on Netflix. 
Hannah, you're watching Vikings for the third time. Jordan's mom and stepdad, they told us to watch Vikings and we haven't gotten around to it yet, but we've heard good things about it. So that might be the next one. Oh, my thing scrolled away. Sorry, I'm just trying to read. Ah. Chicago. Wow. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to read. Rachel said, I just found you three days ago. What's up? Welcome to the It's Air B fam. My hair looks crazy, but these live streams are kind of like a weekly thing over here with us, okay? We love to hang out. I don't even know how to introduce us, but just welcome to the It's Airbnb fam. That's really cool that you have been on. We love to talk all things crochet in the chat, um, give suggestions, help each other out, listen to me ramble. I will say though, if you don't drink coffee, I don't know what you're doing here. This is a coffee crochet club, okay? No, I'm kidding. You don't have to. If you just drink water, tea, you're also welcome. You just have to love crochet or have an appreciation for it or love somebody that does crochet. There's that one too. Alyssa said that her corgi scooter is a little bit of both. He loves to cuddle, but he loves talking too. He likes to do this howling sound, which is his way of talking. I wish Mowgli howled. He very rarely howls. I want to say he's turning seven this year and I've only ever heard him howl maybe like five times in his whole life. So it's very rare, but I love it when he does. <laughs> Samantha said, what are some recommendations, tips for working with mohair? You want to try it out, but you're scared. You should be. The first thing that comes to mind when you talk about mohair, all I'm going to say is at least with my experience, you cannot frog with mohair. So once once you do it, that's it. I mean, if it's like, you know, a couple stitches, you can do it. But if you have, say, like a whole square or like three, four rows of mohair that you need to frog, you can't do it. Every time I have tried to frog with mohair, it creates a knot that I cannot, cannot undo and even if you try to cut that knot and then keep trying to frog knots it's just the quality of the mohair again it's it's just my experience i'm sure people have had better but all i'm going to say is like if you're going to make something you should really do a little swatch gauge with mohair because you don't want to like make a crop top or a sweater and then realize that it's too big or too small and then you need to undo it because you will not be able to Unless y'all have tricks and tips for me when it comes to frogging mohair. Um, what else? What other tip can I give? Mohair, again, in my experience, tends to work up just slightly bigger than it looks because the mohair has like that angel halo quality to it. Um, it does work up a little bit more dense than you would think. So if your mohair is labeled as like a lace weight or a number one, it might work up like a one or a number two. I'm curious though, what kind of mohair did you get? All right, this might, oh, this is kind of taking me forever because I'm talking, but I feel like if I really like, dedicated like one whole day, can probably get like three or four bags done maybe in a day I don't know is that too aggressive is that too much time I might be in over my head like I cannot look at myself <laughs> on my camera right now I actually look like a madman y'all look at my hair right now what's happening what's happening Dang y'all, we're at an hour here on the live stream. What's good? Who's new here? 
We got 39 people in the chat. My thing scrolled away. Sorry. Grace, you're back. Hi, Grace. I know, 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 I know. Oh, I just dropped all the patches. I'm working on it. Okay, y'all. I literally have the patches in front of me. I'm working on it. Finally. I apologize. It should not have taken me as long. But at least I'm getting around to it now. Nah. Selena, have you ever used the waistcoat stitch in crochet? I have, and I also have a tutorial coming on the waistcoat stitch. I have two planned in my head that I want to do with the waistcoat stitch, but there's one for sure that's coming in the next couple of weeks with the waistcoat stitch. It's Abby. I'm currently working on making the giveaway items with all of my subscribers patches that were sent in in like October. Finally, I know. I cannot believe it's been five months, six months. Again, I apologize. Life happened, okay, but I'm doing it now. And also, in case y'all miss the announcement for whoever is new here right now, I don't know if y'all saw, but we hit 50K on YouTube. So the It's Aaron B fam, my bad bees, y'all, we have hit 50K of you. 50,000. There's 50,000. So, to come full circle, because we hit 50K, I will finally be doing a giveaway, multiple giveaways, excuse me, multiple, because I have all of these patches. So I'm not really too sure how many items, again, I will have by the end of this, but we're making tote bags and I kind of want to do like two different sizes so I feel like one of the tote bags like the front of it will be three like three by three so three 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 so nine patches in total on the front and the back and then I also kind of want to try to dabble into like a bigger like side like not satchel but just just like a larger tote bag. So maybe four patches, like three rows of four patches. So some of them will be nine patch tote bags and some of them might be 12 patch tote bags, something like that. Did y'all just hear my stomach right now? All right. Oh. Wait. What? How many more do I have? Where did that one come from? Mm hmm. This is not good. Did I skip one? One, two, three, four, five, six. No. Just had an extra patch sitting around, huh? Whew. 
All right, y'all, last patch, and then I can start sewing these together vertically instead of horizontally. So this was nice with these patches because um, if you guys remember, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name, the lovely person who sent these in. She was here on the last live stream. My head's just all over the place right now, but she actually sent in like, she sent in like 60 or like 80 patches like herself. So this first tote bag is actually all of her patches. Makia, Makia sent them in. Makia, good. So this first tote bag is literally all of her patches and because she was the same creator who made all of them, her tension is the same and her stitch count is the same on every single patch. So that really, really helps me and I'm able to use this crochet hook. But I feel like, feel like once I start using more of like the crazy patches and just mix, mixing and matching different patches into the same project. I'm probably gonna have to use my darning needle because the stitch count will be different. You know, some people use chunky yarn and there's only like 10 stitches across and then some people used literally sport weight or lace weight yarn and there's like 35 stitches across. So I feel like I'll have to use a darning needle when I get to those but at least for this first one we're opening up with a bang easing our way into it you could say Y'all, my, it's crazy. Literally just right now in the span of like 10 seconds, I had three different, completely different thoughts cross my mind. Like my head is all over the place. Like I can't even, it's crazy. I cannot believe I just thought all that at once. But my head right now is like in one place thinking about these patches and these bags and stuff. And then really quickly my head was like, oh wait, don't forget that you have to edit still a video tonight and work on that so that you're not behind and I was like okay good got it and then like a second later my mind was like oh hey wait don't forget don't you want to play with your new resin stuff that you got and I was like oh yeah okay I won't forget <laughs> like my head is all over the place and then I also thought about the other merch that I want to make like I said the the sweaters and the tote bags and the coffee tumblers or water tumblers, whatever you want to call them. They're just cups, okay, just tumblers. But I'm curious if you guys would be interested in that stuff in getting other kinds of merch. All right, this, that's cool. This is the first tote bag. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead, fold it in half, close it up stitch it together and then I still have to stitch everything vertically. So I'll probably get going pretty soon because I'm I'm all over the place right now. And I feel like I'm not the best entertainment for y'all right now. Wow. It really be 6 30 right now. Is that really dinner time? Like already? <sighs> Puerto Rico! <laughs> Emma, Emma said, hey buddy, how was your Friday? <laughs> Grace, I know. She said, it feels like just yesterday I watched your 10K sub giveaway. When was 10K? I feel like 10K was 
like last March or May. No, it was like May, huh? I think 10K was last May. And now here we are, March, and I'm at 50K. So I know it's a ways off, but now the next goal, 100K. Can we do it? Can we do it? <laughs> oh, okay, this is like the last thing I'll mention before I go. Um, Lexi said, how do you deal with crochet funks? I have so many ideas, but feel stuck at times. Grace said, when I get into a crochet funk, I pick up a Tunisian crochet or knitting project for a little bit to give myself a break. That's probably the best advice I could give. Um, I don't really want to say I've gotten into like a funk of like, in the sense of like not wanting to crochet. I feel like I felt very overwhelmed sometimes because there are so many things that I have to make. So I kind of put that pressure on myself. But in general, when I'm kind of feeling like not wanting to crochet, not wanting to work on that project, I will honestly pick up a completely different hobby. It could be crochet, you could be crocheting something else, or you could be um, knitting something else, like you pick up a different hobby. But my best suggestion is, personally, I don't want to, I wouldn't touch crochet. I'm not going to pick up another crochet project knowing that there's like other things that I want to do with crochet. So my tip is I put that whole hobby to the side and pick up a completely different one whether that's you know playing with resin or um punch needling like punch needling rugs or it's painting um knitting what else is there tapestry tapestry macrame just pick up a different type of hobby because it'll completely get your head out of thinking about whatever it is like that you're working on and you'll be having so much fun doing this completely different thing and then because you spent a couple days or a couple hours whatever it is working on this other thing it's gonna make you miss the old thing um I don't know if that makes any sense too but that's kind of how it is for me like if I if I like for example like I knew I had to knit the vest um but I was starting to get a little bit like low on time what I did was I was crocheting stuff or I had like other things to crochet at the time so I would work on that and then after a day I'd be like oh man like I haven't knitted in a while like I'm kind of missing it so if you put crochet away and you don't touch it it's kind of like your heart grows fonder like you'll be so busy doing tapestry or painting or reading a book and then all of a sudden you're gonna have a thought like oh wow that's right, I haven't crocheted in a little bit. Ooh, I miss doing that. And then you're going to want to like do it again. Yeah, that's that's um, Grace's tip is probably the best. If you are in a crochet funk, do something else like knitting. Like, that's kind of how it works for me. Like I obviously I crochet all the time and then I had the opportunity to like knit some things. So I was like really, really into the knitting. But because I'm like slow at knitting, it kind of took me a while to get the knit project done towards the end of my knit project I was fiending I was like fiending to crochet I was like okay this knitting is like fun but I'm like over I've been doing the same thing over and over and over I want to go back to what I know which is crochet so I started crocheting and now that I've been crocheting again for like I don't know like a week I've been seeing like knit patterns all over Instagram and Etsy and I just keep like looking at it like on my phone like oh, I want to knit so it's just like put a little bit of distance between you know the hobby and then you're gonna be like oh, I want Makia she's here yes Makia it's kind of a mess but and I obviously still have a ton of your patches sitting in front of me so I kind of wanted to do one tote bag that was just like all yours because it kind of has like the same green blue theme so this is like the makia bag i think i'm gonna call this one the makia bag but yeah i still have a lot of other stuff i i'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate your red squares um but yeah thank you girl these are all because of you so i feel like you're gonna end up having like like I don't know, like five 
up these bags that have like your squares in them just because you contributed so much. But I wanted a completely Makia bag. So I'm gonna work on it. I still need to stitch everything vertically because I did everything horizontally. And then I need to add the straps or like the handles of the bag. But here's what, here's what the wrong side is looking like. So you guys can see that slip stitch all the way across. And then this side looks really, really clean. So now I just need to go in and do all of these vertical stitches. Maybe I can kind of, you know what? I kind of might do these separately. Like maybe I can like, what's it called? Production line it. So I'll do all of the bags. Like I'll at least get like the body stitched together. And then I might save the handles for all the bags at the very end. I don't know. I don't know yet. Ooh, Spoff. <laughs> Spoff said, I'm late to the party here, but haircut for 50K still? Yes? No? So happy for you, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for the donation. Um. Yes, the answer is yes. I'm still doing the haircut idea. I haven't set a date yet for when I'm going to be recording that. I'm probably going to give my, because I'm, you know, I got all this other shit, but I'm probably going to be doing that in like two weeks. It's the, maybe like, oh, damn, like, yeah, like a week and a half. Oh, no. But you're so sweet. That's really kind of you. You didn't have to do that, but I very much appreciate it. That's so nice. I always forget there's like like stickers and stuff like that, like super chat, super stickers. So thanks, girl. That's very kind of you. But yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. 50K, I said it. I'm going to do it. I'm actually really excited to do it. Y'all know I want to cut my hair anyways. I think it's just like the adrenaline of like knowing I'm going to be doing it myself. I'm not promising it's going to look good, okay? I'm just promising I'm going to do it. That's the only thing I can promise you. So, yeah, stay tuned. I think like the very last week of March, I will be posting the 50K video just because it's in the works right now. And I want all of the giveaway stuff to be part of the 50K video. So I need to finish this first before I can post a video. But I'm excited. All right, this thread is itching me. It's been an hour and 20 minutes, y'all. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Yo, okay. By the way, if you have a recommendation, like haircut idea, an image suggestion, let me know. Obviously, I want to go short, but I don't know what to do. Like, I don't want to just have like, you know, like a straight bob. I have, I'm half Asian, so I have like Asian hair, so it's very like slippery and thick and if I get a like just a plain bob it will be so like blunt and I feel like I'll look like like that 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 character from the Incredibles you know I'm talking about with the glasses the really short girl I feel like I'm gonna look like her or like I'm gonna look like Dora and I don't want to look like Dora okay help me to avoid looking like Ledora so if y'all got suggestions DM me photos help me out because if I come out of this looking like a goddamn fool I'm gonna be pissed I'll be so mad at y'all <laughs> no, I'm kidding <laughs> Lex <laughs> Lexi and Kimberly said Edna 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 mode yo I swear though don't you dare let me look like that you're accountable y'all are accountable for my hair you hear me? <laughs> Jasmine, that's so kind. Just wanted to say I love your videos and you've helped me get into crocheting clothes and now I'm obsessed. Welcome to the family, girl. We're all fucking obsessed here. <laughs> your live stream is very relaxing. K Kalon said. The live stream is very relaxing. Anyways, I would like to thank you for inspiring me to finish the cardigan that I haven't had a glimpse on for seven months. You're crazy. 
happy. I can't blame you. There have been a, just a couple projects that I've started and never finished. But seven months, that's crazy. Well, I'm proud of you for getting a jump start on it. I feel like you'll feel like a weight off your shoulders once it's done. Even if you like don't wear it that often, it's just like the feeling of completing a task, especially a seven month long awaited task. That's going to feel really good. Spoff. Spoff. Do you want me to just call you Spoff? I forgot. I know you messaged me. I feel like I have a message from you on Instagram. But you want me to just call you Spoff? You want me to call you by a different name? Because I want to remember this. But you said shoulder length 90s like cut maybe. Girl, I'm going to need a photo. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what that is. 90s? The first thing that comes to mind is like Spice Girls. And don't you dare tell me to get a Spice Girls haircut. How could you? <laughs> you should go shoulder length-ish with layers, but also make sure that it's not longer in the back like the triangle. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna, I know I'm going to have to get a touch-up. There's no way that I am successfully pulling off uh, John Frieda haircut, okay? It's gonna be bad. I, somebody told me in the last live stream, they're like, no, don't don't cut your own hair. Brad Mondo's gonna make a video about it. <laughs> and I died. I'm all about it. Y'all can roast me. It's totally cool. This is totally cool. All right, guys. I'm gonna get going. But thank you so much for being my friends for the last couple of hours and keeping me company. Can you guys see my hot Cheetos are literally still right there? I didn't touch them this whole time. I'm going to eat the hot Cheetos right now. But thank you guys for joining me. I'll be back on here soon. I'm kind of busy over the next couple of days, but I'm hoping... Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, I will be back on the live stream. And y'all already know I got a video ready for Sunday. I love you guys. You're so sweet. Yeah, y'all, DM me, email me, photo ideas. Help me out. Because I'm telling y'all right now, I'm going to screenshot everybody's name that's in this live chat right now. If I come out looking like Dora the Explorer or Edna, I'm coming for all of y'all. Okay, I'm holding y'all accountable. But anyways, I'm going to keep working on this. Throw on a little bit of Netflix, eat some hot Cheetos. You know the drill. Drink more coffee. And I'll be seeing y'all very soon. Have a good night, a good morning, good lunchtime. Stay safe. Yasmin, bye. Bye, Emma. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Stay creative. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.